All right, so here we've got question number three from the 2021 uh, AP Physics 1 administration, uh, date number one. Um, and this is kind of a classic momentum and impulse problem. So that's a nice little uh, compartmentalized FRQ here where we really are just dealing with uh, momentum and impulse here. So uh, with little velocity or speed time graph thrown in there as well. Here's the first situation, right? It says a student of mass MS standing on a smooth surface uses a stick to push a disc of mass MD. Student exerts a constant horizontal force of magnitude FH. So here's what I want you, to, here's what I would recommend doing when you see this situation. Just kind of like draw a picture of what's happening, right? So we got, and you'll have to forgive my drawings here. Um, you've got a little hockey stick hitting this disc and the disc is going to be moving that way because of the force. So now you know that that force is being applied for a certain time period, right? So it says it's a magnitude of FH. It's applied for a time period T equals TF while pushing the disc. There's negligible friction between the disc and the surface. So it starts at rest, so VI equals zero. Determine an expression for the final speed, VD, of the disk relative to the surface. So the nice thing is that any delta V that we get is going to also be equal to just that final velocity because our initial velocity is zero. So one of the tricky things about this is they're saying you can use these two masses. Don't use them, though, because we know, we know, or sorry, not both of them, excuse me, only use one of them you're only going to need to use one of them because we're determining the final speed here so i know that the force i applied times the time is equal to and remember this force is being applied to the disc the mass of the student or sorry excuse me the mass of the disc times delta v mass of the disc times delta v. Well, I know that the change in velocity is just the final velocity. So instead of delta v, I'm just going to say vd because the it's, it's starting at rest. I'm just going to rearrange that. I got fh tf over md equals my velocity of the disk. Assume there's negligible friction between the student's shoes. Okay, now we're talking about the student. After time tf, the student slides with the speed vs. So derive an equation for the ratio of VD to VS. Perfect. Now, we are not allowed to use FH, TF, any of those components. We're only allowed to use the masses and any physical constants. So here's a conservation of momentum problem. This is essentially an explosion problem. And the challenge of the AP test is really, hey, when or how can I identify how to approach this problem, right? Because if you start trying to figure out how to do it with this equation, it becomes way too hard. And really, you just want to say, well, if the disk is going to go to the right, student is going to go to the left. So I know that the mass of the student times the velocity of the student is going to be equal to the mass of the disk times the velocity of the disk. Now look, you're looking for a ratio VD over VS. There's a lot of times when a, an AP question will ask you for a ratio like this. Don't get tripped up in the fact that it's a ratio. Just think of that as I'm solving so that one side of my equation is this. I want to make one side of the equation that. What's going to be on the other side of the equation? So if I need my one side to be VD over VS, I need to divide by VS on this side. All right. And then if I need it to just be that, I need to divide by MD. So I know that VD over VS is going to be equal to MS over MD. Boom. And that's it. Now, yes, this person's moving to the left, this person's moving to the right. But remember, you're looking at speed here. So that is a scalar quantity you don't need to necessarily include the fact that it's a negative value there so the ratios are going to be exact kind of opposites of the ratios of the mass and that makes sense because the larger the mass you have the smaller the velocity you're going to have after they push each other 
Now, if MS is much larger than MD, if MS is much larger than MD, that means VD over VS is going to be much larger, which means VD needs to be much bigger. So that disk will get to that velocity after TF, right? So we know that this is going to be VD. This is going to be maybe VS because the student is going to have a much smaller velocity than the disk. And it says that there is limited friction, uh, so they're not going to necessarily slow down at all. So my student's velocity is going to look like that. And then once it stops having a force applied, it's going to be the same. And then my disk is going to have that relationship there. So not too tricky so far. Now things get a little bit more challenging, all right? The disk is now moving at a constant speed, V1, on the surface towards a block of mass MB. This is at rest, right? So I know that my total momentum of the system is really just MD V1, right? MD V1. The disc and block collide head on and stick together and the center of mass of the disc block system moves with speed VCM. So really, you know that before the collision, the momentum is this. After the collision, the momentum is MD plus MB times VCM. So the, suppose the mask there, the mass of the disk is much greater than the mass of the block. Estimate the velocity of the center of mass of the disk block system. Explain how you arrived at your prediction without deriving it mathematically. Okay, so they're saying, hey, I know that this equation is true. Don't tell me anything about this equation. Or don't derive that VCM without with that equation. So really, we need to just think of the ratios of the mass again, right? So if the disk has a much larger mass than the block. If the disk has a much larger mass than the block, that means the system will start with all the momentum it will have at the beginning or at the after the collision. The mass will only change slightly so VCM should be about V1. Suppose the mass of the disk is much less than the mass of the block. So for that reason, the system again starts with all the momentum it has after but the mass will increase a very, very large amount. So the final mass will be much larger. So the mass of the system the mass will increase drastically. So the velocity of the center of mass will be just about zero, will be just about zero. Now suppose that neither object's mass is much greater than the other, but they are not necessarily equal. Derive an equation for VCM, express your answer in terms of V1, MD, MB, and physical constant. Well, guess what? We just did that right up here. We just solved for VCM, so it becomes MD V1 over MD plus MB equals V. CM. Does that agree with my reasoning? Yes, it does. Why does it agree with that? Because according to my equation, as I increase MD, uh, because a certain value in MD is much greater than MB. So let's focus only on MD and MB. So when MD is large, we are going to have 
the coefficient before v1 is essentially 1. Because md over md plus mb is essentially just 1, right? Because md, the mb is not really doing much here. So md over md is md. There's 1, excuse me. So hopefully that helps. Um, again, we're thinking about the changes in certain variables, the, the changes in the components there, um, deriving different equations, making sure that we're paying attention to what matters. This ratio advice hopefully helps a little bit there, talking a little bit about just solve for that ratio on one side of the equation, and then you can kind of go from there. Um, otherwise, have a good one.